Hello, 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 hello. We are into chapter two of The Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne Dyer. And let me tell you, we are moving quickly through because we are going to be into week three of the new year and of January. And we are going to be into chapter three and four is our reading assignments for week three. Three, chapter three and four. You are so welcome to go listen to the audiobook. I did pin the audiobook that's on YouTube to the top of our group page. Go right on ahead and get yourself and listen to it. It is in Dr. Wayne Dyer's voice and just take notes, just ingest all of that good information. If you need to listen more than once, do that. Okay, and make sure you, if you can take the time, get those little uh, work things done because we are going to be recapping each week at the end of the month. I will let you guys know what time or shoot me some times and days that work for you guys. I think Saturdays, the weekends probably work better for those types of things. Um, but it might have to be on a Monday, maybe the 29th, I'm thinking, or the 28th. So let me know, does the 28th work better for you or does the 29th work better for you? All right. And I just see me. Okay, so, you know, I have my little notes. And I also highlight in the book where I want to read. And I also have a Word document that I wrote out that of, of, of like a little script so that it keeps me on point. It keeps me on time. And because these this information is just awesome. Awesome. OK. One minute and we will get it started. I'm not trying to keep you guys long, but the engagement is welcomed. And yeah, that is not money. That is my fan because I'll be getting hot. Like Tabitha Brown said today, she said, well, why I be getting hot? So I got fans all around. All right. It is eight o'clock. Welcome, 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 my resilience warriors to the chapter two recap of the Power of Intention, Learning to Co-Create Your World, Your Way by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. And if you are new here, welcome. We have been delving into this book this week, well, this month, as we are pushing into the, the year of mental currency versus material currency, and we're starting off with our intentions. Now, this chapter is moving from thinking about intention to knowing intention. And in the beginning of the book, he shares a story of how he, what was his knowing moment that the power of intention was real, that that was like a real thing. And he gave the, when he was in Maui and a woman drowned and he said he could see, he could feel her floating and everything. And he knew that she was at peace. And I was thinking like, when was my knowing moment? My knowing moment came before I even knew the power of intention book itself. That feeling that he felt when he, in the, when he, that he described in the beginning of that chapter, I felt that feeling when mom passed away. When she passed away and I was in Pennsylvania and she was in Maryland and I got that phone call. And as soon as I heard that, that hint, I felt this overwhelming peace come into my heart and I knew that she was okay. I knew that she was, that she transitioned fine and that she knew that I was thinking of her and I would have been there if I could have. So that was my, me, my period of like, that knowing, that silent knowing. And he says, we all have it. He says, have you ever had a knowing moment? So that is my first question to you guys. Have you ever had that knowing moment? And if you have not gone back and read chapter two, go listen to it. It's an audio book. I pinned it to the top of the group. 
Okay, so this chapter is my favorite chapter because it talks about the power of intention, the seven faces of intention. So this is like what the biggest thing that I took from this book, the whole book I've taken, but the, the seven faces of intention. And the seven faces of intention are creativity, kindness, loving, beautiful, what is it? Unlimited abundance expansive and receptive so there's seven of them and we are going to talk about those and he says i wrote this down in my notes because i wanted it to stay in your brain that the seven faces of intention are an inner awareness like they bring you awareness that you like you have outside awarenesses where you can see with your physical eye but these are inner awarenesses to really live and be in these seven phases of intention all right let me make sure i don't skip over anything i don't want to skip over i got my notes but you didn't want to skip over So this chapter aligns beautifully with our air method principles, and I believe it offers insights for our journey of personal growth and resilience. It delves into the understanding of truth of the true essence of intention. Dr. Dreyer describes intention not just as a personal goal or a plan, but as a universal energy, a part of the very fabric of existence. This perspective shifts how we view our goals and our actions. And it really does when you start to really apply them and, and really live the seven faces of intention. He introduces us to these seven faces of intention. Again, creativity, kindness, love, beauty, expansion, abundance, and receptivity. Each of these aspects is crucial in our journey of adaptation. Inner work and re repetition, which is the air method, which is the air cycle. They give us in, a, they guide us in aligning our actions with the universal flow of energy. And they do, if you really, really say them to yourself and just do the implementations that he recommends that come at the end of the chapter. They will guide you in the universal flow of energy. The chapter emphasizes the power of the, our mindset. By nurturing our positive thoughts and beliefs, we align ourselves more closely with the universal intention. There, This is where our inner work in the air method plays a crucial role, cultivating a mindset that embraces positivity and abundance, because that's what we that's what we want. We want that unlimited abundance. All right. So now I highlighted something in my book and I'm going to read it. It is in the he 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 wrote in Power of Silence. Carlos Castaneda describes silent knowledge as something that all of us have something that has complete mastery, complete knowledge of everything, but it cannot think, therefore it cannot speak of what it knows. Man has given up silent knowledge for the world of reason. The more he clings to the world of reason, the more imperial intent becomes. We are gonna have to look that word up. So we are gonna pause and we're gonna look that word up because I am a word person, and if I don't understand a word, I meant to write that the definition of that word down so that I could tell you all. It's E P H E M E R A, and it is lasting a very short time, lasting one day only. So a short intent becomes the more short intent becomes. I don't, I don't want mine to be short, short. So. We move and we want to move fast. Okay. And then I wrote down silent knowledge starts when you invite the power of intention to play an active part in your life. It has to be an inner choice. Oh my gosh. I cannot tell you how important that is. That one statement right there. It has to be an inner choice. You have to be moving in that state of mind to be in the power of attention to actually see and understand what 
that power of intention and being that energy field is. Now, what else do I have? Okay, so that leads us right into me guiding you. Well, just take take a second, okay? Take a second. He says, take a moment right now to put this book down and allow yourself to trust and gently experience an awareness of your non-physical self. First, close your eyes and empty your mind of the rational thoughts and the multitudinous, ever-changing chatter that goes on in your mind. Next, hit the delete button every time doubt appears. Finally, open to the emptiness. Then you can begin to discover how silently, how to silently know the power of intention. And this is what I was talking about basically when I was telling you guys about why I have all of this in my vision is one reason right there because of the ever-changing things that would flood through my mind when I was trying to focus and just get myself together. And by having all of this around, I don't even have that chatter anymore. And I know how to silence it more too, because I, I just would say the seven faces of intention over and over and over again to myself. I would say intention over and over and over to myself just to keep myself in that good atmosphere, that good cycle. All right, and that leads us to this that I wrote down that I thought was like important to me. By banishing doubt and trusting your intuitive feelings, you clear a space for the power of intention to flow through. We must believe in ourselves. We must banish all of that and we must believe in God, the source, whatever we're calling it, because it is all the same. It is all love. It is all understanding. It is just, it's just different forms of how people see it. Let's get into those seven faces of intention. Okay. So number one is creativity. Create and co-create anything that you direct your power of intention toward. Creative energy is a part of you. Okay, so we are all creative energy and stay in that state. Make sure you're coloring. Make sure you're, you're doing something to generate those creative sparks in your brain. Um do a puzzle, you know what I mean? Stay, stay in that state of intention where you know that creativity is like, I don't know, I did, drawing, coloring, playing, building Legos, you know what I mean? Stay in that state of, of that wonderment and that I don't know, just, just stay in that creative state. That's intention. Number two, kindness. Such a positive effect on your life. That's what kindness does. It has a positive effect on your life. Choosing to be kind is a choice to have the power of intention active in your life. So there are times when I see people who are not kind and it, it just it just makes me wonder what's going on in their life because it is a choice. Like I said, choosing to be kind is a choice to have the power of intention active in your life. And this is this is all the words from the book. When you're unkindly, you're blocking the face of kindness. So when you're being unkind to people, regardless of the judgment, the side shade, all of that, that you're not in the power of intention. You're not in a flow of where you're going to manifest what you want. You're basically going to be manifesting things that you don't want because you're being unkind. Okay. Number three. Let me make sure. Yes. Love. 
Judgment, anger, hate, fear, or prejudice won't thrive here. And it sure will not thrive here. If you want to be someone who wants love and you want to give love, you cannot hold anger. You cannot hold judgment. You can't hold fear. You can be in it in a moment, but don't stay in it. Don't like, let's move out of the season where we are just randomly talking about people. We see like the picture of tiny that's floating around and people are doing all kinds of stuff like that's so mean that's like that is so far from the 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 from love that's so far from that intent of kindness of i don't i don't wish to be in that realm anymore wishing for those around you to flourish and grow and become all that we're capable of becoming you attract more dissatisfied ooh you attract more dissatisf dissatisfaction that isn't the face of love consequently more of what you don't love will appear in your life and i cannot say that enough like the law of attraction is real what you give out is what you get, people. What you give out is definitely what you get. Like it says, consequently, more of what you don't love will appear in your life. So let's move away from judgment. Let's move away from anger. Let's move away from fear. Let me see. Is anybody popping up on there? Okay, I'm going to keep going. I see one person keeps popping in now, but I'm not sure what's going on. But that is the face of love. And I wrote down here, I put thoughts and emotions are pure energy. Love is the most powerful and still the most unknown energy of the world. Whoa. Just think about that. The unknown energy of the world, the most unknown energy of the world, because we're so focused on so much other stuff that you forget that judgment, anger, hate, fear and prejudice. That's not pushing you toward God. That's not it really is not against anything, period, anything. OK, so number four, beauty. What else could creative, kind and loving expression be other than beautiful? How about that? Other than beautiful. Okay, another thing that I highlighted that I wanted to emphasize that's in this face of beauty. We need to silently know. So he's just saying that he ag agrees with Keats, John Keats. We need to silently know that the truth, that truth and beauty are one and the same. Truth and beauty are one and the same. Out of the truth is the originating spirit in an expression of the power of intention comes truth as beauty. This knowing leads to valuable insights in relation to exercising your individual will, imagination, and intuition. Come on. If you're not tapping into your own intuition, what are you doing? If you're not tapping into your own imagination, how, where are your dreams at? Like, how far are you reaching? Don't, don't little reach, less big reach, okay? Come on, set them big, big, big goals. All right, beautiful thoughts build a beautiful soul. I love that so much. Beautiful thoughts build a beautiful soul. And page 28, I highlighted that he was, he's reading um, a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And he says that there was a guy in the book um, and he said that he reminds us that if we focus on what's ugly, we attract more ugliness into our thoughts and then into our emotions and ultimately into our lives. By choosing to hang on to one's corner of freedom, even in the worst situations, we can process our world with the energy of appreciation and beauty and create an opportunity to transcend our circumstances. Let me read that first part. If we focus on what's ugly, we attract more ugliness into our thoughts and then into our emotions and ultimately into our lives. Mic down. Mic down. 
I love the way Mother Teresa described this quality when she asked, what do you do every day in the streets of Calcutta at your mission? She responded, every day I see Jesus Christ in all of his distressing disguises, saying she sees Jesus Christ in everyone because we all are, because we all have a story to tell about how God helped us, source helped us, a law, however we see it. We all have that story. Come on. So moving to number five. is the face of expansion. The power of intention manifests as an expression of expanding creativity, kindness, love, and beauty. By establishing your personal relation to this face of intention, you expand your life through the power of intention, which was, is, and always will be a component of this originating intention. The power of intention is the power to expand and increase all aspects of your life, no exceptions. The power of intention is the power to expand and increase all aspects of your life, no exceptions. Expansion is there for everyone. Please, please get this book, put it in the, in in your Rolodex so that you look at it more than once because every time I look at this book, I'm like, get something else. That's when you know you got a good book. The only prov proviso to this forward movement of intention is to co co cooperate with it everywhere and allow this spirit of increase to express itself through you and for you and for everyone you encounter then you will have no worry or anxiety. Trust the face of expansion and do what you do because you're loving what you do and doing what you love. Know that expansive beneficial results are the only possibilities. Once I started living the seven faces of intention, things started shifting. It got bad, it got turmoil, but it was clarity. Things started pushing into my blueprint, the blueprint that's in my mental house. That's what started shifting. I started renovating and, and it, that's it right there. I'm going to read that part again. The only proviso to this forward movement of intention is to cooperate with it everywhere and allow this spirit of increase to express itself through you and for you and for one, for everyone you encounter. Then you will have no worry or anxiety. Trust the face of expansion and do what you do because you're loving what you do and doing what you love. Know that expansive beneficial results are only possibilities. Okay, like we're all expansive. These seven faces of intention, even if you don't remember the the meat, and, the meat and potatoes that he has of it, just say those words to yourself over and over and over again, and it'll start to click in. It'll start to, to make an, a difference in your life also. So we're moving on to number six, which is unlimited abundance. One resource that stands above all others. This would be your mind and the collective mind of humankind. And that's what unli unlimited abundance is. That means whatever is for me is for you and the next person. We shouldn't be fighting over things. There should be no war. That There is abundance and we all need to get on that shift of mind and cash in on that mental currency to know that that's where it's at. So I do have something I highlighted. Know that you're connected to this life force and that you share it with everyone and all that you perceive to be missing. Open to the expression of the face of unlimited abundance and you'll be co-creating your life as you like it to be. That is the truth. Sometimes it may not come how you want it, but it's going to come if you are open to abundance, if you are open and you know that it is, everybody is abundance and you stop worrying like we're focused 
I said this in um, my session when, when I did the Adapt to Thrive, embracing, per, embracing Change for Personal Growth. And I told them, I said that you focus on the things that you don't want and what, what could go wrong. Stop thinking about what could, what could go wrong and focus more on what could go right. And more of what is going to go right is going to go right because you're changing your thoughts. You're shifting all of that. You don't have to have an intellectual understanding. It's enough to silently know and proceed to live with your awareness of this face of endless abundance. So you, you just have to know, just know it. Practice that the rest of this week. Well, the week coming weekend. Just just really, really think about abundance and think about having it and think about what you want versus what you don't want to happen. What do you want to happen? Push yourself more into that mindset. Number seven. Okay. Number seven is my favorite face of intention. And let me tell you how sharp my receptivity has gotten since focusing on that one. Well, not even really focusing on it, but it has become my favorite one. We have a skunk that runs around our neighborhood. And I I am I'm all about symbolism and totem animals and all of all of the things that resonate with me. So I looked up the skunk and the symbolism be, be behind the skunk. And if you smell one, what does it mean? Well, yeah, if you smell one, if you see one, da da da, what does it mean? Do you know that a skunk only sprays when he's defending himself? And do you know that? that actually means in symbolism it means that to be receptive when you smell a skunk it should remind you to be receptive to stay open and that's what it does for me that is my receptivity story that is why i love receptivity so much because even though there is no skunk let me tell you i will still smell a skunk and it just reminds me to stay receptive to stay open. No one or no thing is rejected by the receptive face of intention. It welcomes everyone and every living thing without judgment, never granting the power of intention to some and withholding it from others. It's expansive. Okay, it's an unlimited abundance. It's for everyone. The receptive face of intention means to me that all of nature is waiting to be called into action. We only need to be willing to recognize and receive. Intention can't respond to you if you fail to recognize. it. If you see chance and coincidence governing your life and the world, then the universal mind of intention will appear to you as nothing but an amalgamation of forces devoid of any order or power. Simply put, to be unreceptive is to deny yourself access to the power of intention. In order to utilize the all-inclusive receptivity of intention, you must produce within yourself an intelligence equal to equal in affinity to the universal mind itself. You must not only become receptive to having guidance available to you to manifest your human intentions, but you must be receptive to giving this energy back to the world reciprocation. As I've said many times in speeches and earlier writings, your job is not to say how, it's to say yes. Yes, I am willing. Yes, I know the power of intention is universal. It's denied to no one. That right there, you must not only become receptive to having guidance available to you to manifest your human intentions, but you must be receptive to giving this energy back to the world. That means you must be willing to understand somebody else's journey and not just be going like this because you think you know everything. We must we must practice the seven faces of intention. 
By being receptive, I'm in harmony with the power of intention of the universal creative force. This works in so many ways. You'll see the right people magically appearing in your life, your body healing. And it's if something that you want, you'll just even discover yourself becoming a better dancer, card player, or athlete. The field of intention allows everything to emanate into form and its unlimited potential is built into all that has manifested even before its initial birth pangs were being expressed. That right there. So it works in many different ways. You'll see the right people magically appearing in your life, your body healing. That's being receptive. That's that that just lets you know that you're in harmony with the power of intention. When you can actually see each of these seven faces of intention in your life, you know that you're in harmony. You're 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 it's wonderful. Last, they're creative, kind, loving, beautiful, ever expanding, endlessly abundant and receptive to all. And you can connect to this alluring field of intention yourself. Now, for, for me, this chapter was full on and it was pushing ego to me. It was really, really discussing um, overcoming e ego driven barriers. So, um, the ego often creates a false sense of self, of self importance, and separation from others and the universe. It can manifest in various ways, like competitiveness, seeking approval. Huh, I've been there, an attachment to material success. Okay, so I have some tips for overcoming these barriers. Tip number one, mindfulness and self-awareness. I'm about to have a self-awareness course coming up. Please look out for it. It will entail everything that was in the self-awareness workshop that I posted on my Today's Vibe YouTube page and more. It's going to be powerful, explosive, explosive because you know that your self-awareness is your foundation to your mental house. You must be self-aware. And there are 15 components that I've discovered myself in my journey. Um, there are so many more, but the 15 components that are going to be into my course, you're going to see though it's just going to be powerful. So look out for that self-awareness course. Practice mindfulness to recognize when ego-driven thoughts arise. Okay, so that's one of them tips for overcoming these barriers. Practice mindfulness. That is whether you're going, whether you do some journaling, whether you meditate, because that's all thoughts. That's all you're you're paying attention to the thoughts that are in your head. How are you speaking to yourself? How are you speaking to others? Um your behaviors, how are you behaving to people around you? All of those things matter in being mindful and and, and self-awareness. That's being self-aware of yourself, how you're being portrayed to yourself and how people see you. Gratitude is number two. Practice gratitude. You have to cultivate the habit of gratitude. Every day when I get up, I say thank you every day. I just, I say it a couple times a day because I am so thankful for just how my life is, even the good, the bad, just, just all of it in a whole, because it's, it's all a lesson as long as we take the good out of it versus getting stuck on the bad. And I know some people have problems with that, but it can be done to just focus on the, go the good and get the message behind what's going on. Empathy and connection. Focus on building genuine connections with others. Positive relationships. That is one of the flow, the one of the five pillars in the resilience flow. Is positive relationships, and it's one of the things that I have learned and have been working on, and I have so many now that I can say are positive relationships in my life that are genuine connections, and they're helping me grow, and I'm helping them grow, and that's what it is, that unconditional love and that reciprocation. 
Okay, so here are some practical ways to connect to the power of intention. All right, and these are... Yes, these are the five suggestions for implementing the ideas that he has in the back of the book. Okay, so, well, not in the back of the book, the end of the chapter, he lists five suggestions for implementing these ideas. All right, so number one, meditation and visualiza visualization. Regular meditation helps in quieting the mind. Visualize your intentions aligning with the universal energy. Now, if you have problems meditating and you can't get your mind to quiet, keep going. Do not stop. I suggest using um, guided meditations first. Don't just try to use the sound. Use guided meditations. When I first started, it was hard for me. I, I started at a minute, then I moved up to three minutes, then moved up to five minutes. Now I can, I can go, I can meditate for as long as I want to now, but I had to build up that resilience to meditating and using Dr. Wayne, not Dr. Wayne Dyers, but uh, Deepak Chopra has guided meditations. There are some free ones, but you're probably going to have to spend, um, not unless you find them, but his guided meditations were the ones who helped me because in them, he gives you a Sanskrit, which is a word, and the word means something. And when you get, he'll tell you when you get off focus and those thoughts start to pop in or you hear sounds or something, just repeat the mantra, the Sanskrit that he gives you, and it will bring you back to focus. And it's so true, but it takes practice. It may not take you one day. It may not take you three days. It may not take you a week, it, but it if you practice it, the more, the more it will quiet your, your brain. And visualization, holiness, visualization is awesome. That's why I say it's important to have things around you that keep you in that mind frame, that mindset where you want to be, the goals you want to achieve. You are not alone. It took me a while to realize that I was not alone and I am not alone. I put that on there for a reason because I thought I was and you are not alone. Find your equilibrium. I'm finding my equilibrium. Like put things around you that just make you think, keep you in a creative, kind, beautiful, expansive, receptive, loving, abundant intention. Okay. The second one is, um, is that the second one? Yes. This one, he says, visualize the power of intention. We did that one and you can do be reflective. That one was one that I was like, okay, I had to, I had to read that one again because it, it, it I've, you there are certain people you don't want to mirror but just listen to this suggestion how he put it in the book a mirror reflects without distortion or judgment consider being like a mirror and reflect what comes into your life without judgment or opinions be unattached to all who come into your life by not demanding that they stay go or appear at your whim Discontinue judging yourself or others for being too fat, too tall, too ugly, too anything. Just as the power of intention accepts and reflects you without judgment or attachment, try to be the same with what appears in your life. Be like a mirror. That is how I try and live. And let me tell you, I almost got pulled into somebody else's reflection and it was... It, it was like, hold on, that's not my reflection. That is not how I see this situation. And I choose, I understand how you see the situation, but it's not going to be my reflected reflection because I do not live in that space of judgment, like of all of those aspects of, of being well, that's you need to pick a side, draw a line. And, oh my goodness, it was just it was just horrible. So that is reflective. Um, what else there is? Expect beauty. That's number three. This is the five suggestions. So number one was visualize the power of intention. 
with meditation, visualization. Number two, be reflective. Okay, so you can also use affirmations, positive affirmations that resonate with the seven faces of intention. And when I tell you, if you see all of those stickies back here, they're all affirmations. They're all positive words, something that I want to remember that keeps me in the power of intention. Nature connection is an also another way to visualize the power of intention. Spend time in nature to feel a deeper connection with the universal energy and creative expression. Engage in activities that allow you to express your creativity. Do those things. When I tell you it will grow you, it will. All right, so number three of the five suggestions. So you have one, visualize the power of intention. I just gave you some tips for that, some ways to connect to the power of intention through there. Number two, be reflective. Number three, expect beauty. This suggestion includes expecting kindness and love along with beauty in your life by deeply loving yourself and your surroundings and by showing reverence for all of life. There's always something beautiful to be experienced wherever you are. Right now, look around you and select beauty as your focus. This is so different from habitually being alert for ways to feel hurt, angry, or offended. Expecting beauty helps you perceive the power of attention in your life. And this is one of the things that I have been like going back and forth about is and now this just really like like stamps it down and, and really clarifies it for me is to expect beauty because I expect beauty out of people and I don't get that from them. And it, it kind of turned me off from communicating with people. And it's that just right there is just like expected anyway. Expecting beauty helps you perceive the power of intention in your life. So as long as my intentions and what I am putting out is good, I'm going to stay on that path and not really worry about anybody else and how they are. Because I know I'm, I'm a good person. Number four, meditate on appreciation. Cherish the energy that you share with all living beings now and in the future, and even those that have lived before you. Feel the surge of that life force that allows you to think, sleep, move, about, digest, and even meditate. The power of intention responds to your appreciation of it. The life force that's in your body is key to what you desire. As you appreciate your life force as representative representative of the power of intention, a wave of determination and knowing surges through you. The wisdom of your soul as it responds to your meditation on appreciation assumes command and knows every step that must be taken. Meditate on appreciation. Just be appreciative of everything, no matter what. If somebody cuts you off, just be appreciative that you made it out of that instance without getting in an accident. You know what I mean? Just live, live in it, meditate on it. That's so awesome. Feel that surge. And the fifth step to implement, suggestion for implementing um, the, the ideas in this chapter, which is living the seven faces of intention, is to banish doubt. When doubt is banished, Abundance flourishes and anything is possible. We all tend to use our thoughts to create the world we choose. If you doubt your ability to create the life you intend, then you're refusing the power of intention. Even when nothing seems to indicate that you're accomplishing what you desire in your life, refuse to entertain doubt. Remember the Charlie strap of intention is waiting for you to float up and be carried along. Shakespeare declared, our doubts are traitors and make us lose, lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. And Ramana Maharshi observed, doubts arise because of an absence of surrender. You may, welcome, you may well choose to doubt what others say to you or what you experience with your senses, but banish doubt when it comes to knowing that a universal force of intention 
designed you and got you here. Don't doubt your creation from a field of energy that's always available to you. And that is the end of chapter two. I love, love, love how the flow of that chapter went and integrating those practices that we shared, that I shared into your daily lives can significantly enhance our connection with the power of intention. As we become more aware of our ego-driven barriers and actively work to align ourselves with the universal energy, we open ourselves to a world of possibilities. Let's share our experiences and insights on how these practices are influencing our journey with the AIR method. Your stories are powerful testament to the transformative power of intention. Share them, share them, share them. Each of these faces of intention have made a big, from creating my AIR method program and my book and being a co-author to just living kindness, being work, just working on being just every day kindness. And when any negative or, or I, I, I will shut, I shut stuff down. Like I shut stuff down because it, if it, it starts to give me a headache, if I move into that, that realm of, of just bad, bad feelings, like non-good stuff. So that is there. So you share your stories if you want. Please, please, please. I would appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time, spending it here with this recap of chapter two. We are moving on to chapter three and chapter four for next week, though that is going to be be the focus of the week. And reminder, on Monday through Friday, you will get a weekly post. And at the end of the month, probably either on the 28th or the 29th, please let me know which is good for you guys. If you made it all the way here, thank you so much. I appreciate you for spending time with Coach Angela, a.k.a. Coach Vibe, whichever you want. That is where we are. Let's get our mental house together. Let's cash in on this mental currency. Have a great, great Saturday night. and. Deuces.